This is a brain, seeing, hearing, remembering. Well, to be more precise, this is a model, the brainchild of an American designer, Mr. Will Burton. Mr. Burton designed and constructed this model. It's a unique, remarkable thing. No one's ever had one before. He made it out of aluminium discs and flashing lights to simulate some of the remarkable processes that go on inside the human brain and to demonstrate them to us in light and in sound. And it's really very simple. These are the two eyes, the left eye and the right eye. In order to understand it, let's concentrate on the right side of the brain. Now, this is the right eye. It sees something, so it sends a message along the optic nerves to these spheres. These are the relay stations of the brain. If you like the telegraph offices, they make sure that the message goes to the right destination. And the right destination of a message from the eye is that big saucer at the back there, which is the seeing region of the brain. This is the right ear. Now, the right ear hears something, just like the eye. It sends its message along the nerve channels to the relay station where the message is sent off to its right destination. And the right destination for a message from the ear is up here to this saucer overhead, which is the hearing region of the brain. Now, what the brain has both seen and heard, it can remember. And it stores the memories of the things it's seen and heard here, on this great saucer behind me, which is the memory region of the brain. Now, if the brain's seen it and heard it and remembered it, it can start at any moment to think about it. It can bring up from its memory its thoughts, its recollections, to the surface of its consciousness. And these images that it remembers appear on this screen. And this screen is the screen of consciousness, the many unconnected images that are floating about in your memory that suddenly you can recall. Happy birthday! So we've seen the seeing, the hearing, the remembering and the consciousness parts of this brain. And there's one more bit to know, this mushroom in the middle. This is the control centre of the brain and this enables the brain to concentrate. So let's see if it can concentrate. A little experiment. Imagine that we've taken the brain to a concert and we sit it down in the concert hall and it looks towards the stage and on the stage comes a woman who sings a song. Now how does the brain cope with first of all looking at the woman, then listening to her sing and then evaluating her performance? Well we begin with looking because the concert hall is smoky, the light is not what the brain is accustomed to, so the eyes have to accustom themselves first to the light. The brain is in the concert hall and as the house lights dim, a message from the eyes goes up the optic nerve to the relay station. From there, an impulse returns to the eye and the iris expands. But it's expanded too much and an impulse travelling back to the relay station causes the return impulse to contract the pupil. Again, it overacts and the pupil gets too small. A third impulse adjusted correctly. The eyes are now focused on the singer and they send messages to alert the control center in the middle of the brain. The messages are passed on to the seeing regions where they create a pattern and they return then to the control center. The brain now becomes conscious of the singer. Now that the brain can see the singer, let's see what it does with the sound of her voice. To adjust the ears to the sound of the singer, a message first travels from the ears to the relay station, which feeds back an impulse to adjust the muscle that regulates the tension on the eardrums. The ears are now tuned to the singer and they send messages to alert the control centre. The messages are passed on to form patterns on the hearing regions and as the messages return to the control centre, the brain becomes conscious of the song. Well, we've seen how both the image of the singer and the sound that she makes are received and processed by the brain. We saw them happen separately, but obviously in real life they happen simultaneously. And we're now going to do it all again and make it happen together. But before we do that, one point. The brain that we've brought into this concert hall isn't the brain of a newborn baby, a brain which has had no previous experience. This is the brain of an adult, 
a brain that has already seen and heard many things and whose memory is stored with all sorts of fleeting images which keep cropping up in its consciousness. So the brain is sitting there thinking of all these things that it knows about. And then when the concert begins, you'll see the eyes begin to focus on it and the ears tune up to it. And gradually the brain will concentrate on the singer to such an extent that it will be the only thing it's thinking about. So all the other images will disappear from its consciousness and they'll be there just the singer. And at that moment, memory will take over because the brain will begin to remember other singers and will compare them. And in this way, will reach a judgment on the performance. Okay.